Hey mom, I'm sorry I wasn't able to take out my phone at work today. It was really hectic all day. Did something happen? You finally answered. Do you have any idea how long I've been waiting to hear back from you? I'm sorry, I can't use my phone at work. Fine, whatever. Laura, I went by your place in the afternoon. Your laundry was out drying. Care to explain yourself? The weather was nice, so I figured I'd hang dry them today. They say it's much better for clothes than putting them in the dryer. That's not what I'm talking about. Matt's shirts were covered in wrinkles. Do you even know how to dry your clothes properly? There's not much I can do about that. They're actually supposed to have wrinkles. The type of fabric they're made of makes it look wrinkled on purpose. Wrinkly fabric? What? You're having Matt wear trashy shirts like those? Hey, Matt picked them out himself. It's not like I picked them out. That's enough excuses. Go get him some proper shirts. Oh, okay. Sure, will do. Oh, that reminds me about the dinner you made the other day. Do you have any idea what salt and pepper are? It was like I was eating the air. It had no flavor at all. Huh? But Dad said it was delicious. Plus, it's Matt's favorite food. Ugh, do you not even know what flattery is? I'll say what everyone else won't say. It tasted about as dull as hospital food. I'm not a sick person. Put some real flavor in there. I'll keep that in mind. You've been married to Matt three years already, right? One of these days, you need to learn my style of cooking. Maybe you should get some proper training. Training? I'm saying that you need to come here so that I can teach you how this family cooks. What a blessing that would be. Let's do it starting tomorrow. Sorry, but I have work tomorrow. Well then, the day after tomorrow. I have work that day as well. Seriously? You keep working and working, but you barely make any money. Why don't you save working until you can figure out how to be a proper housewife first? Well, that would be nice, but I wanted to save some money before I have kids. Worry about money after you've had them. You haven't even had one kid. Aren't your priorities a little off? You can't do laundry, you can't cook, and you can't even have a child. You have to be a good wife before you can start thinking about being a good mother. You don't have to say stuff like that. Then start doing what you're supposed to, huh? That's right. You take the day off on Sundays, right? Let's start your housewife training next Sunday. Okay. Oh, also, when you're on your way to the house, could you pick up a lottery ticket? Actually, 30 tickets would be best. Apparently, people always hit at least a few numbers when they buy from that lottery place. Yeah, I heard that too recently. You should try buying some too. If you hit the lottery, your whole life would be flipped around. I don't think I'm that lucky, unfortunately. Well, even better then. You can use this as a chance to turn your look around. Maybe God will give a good-for-nothing woman like you a chance. <laughs> I'll think about it. Just don't forget about my tickets, at least. Since I'm going out of my way to teach you cooking, the ticket cost will be on you, okay? Laura, are you at home yet? I've been trying to reach you for a while now. Yes, I just got back. Sorry, I didn't see your messages earlier. Well, then you should have texted me right away. Thank you so much for teaching me your cooking ways today. Those are the kind of things you should be sending me. Sorry, I said it when I left the house, so I didn't think that would be necessary. But thank you again for teaching me how to cook today. Ugh. You really have a long way to go as a wife. You know what? I'll give you some homework ahead of time. Homework? What do you mean? Yep. If it's just in your head, you'll forget it right after I teach it to you. I want you to get a notebook by next lesson, then write everything you learned today and turn it into me. You should also write down some points of reflection. Not just reflection about cooking, but about the things I warned you about as a wife. Oh, yeah. Got it. You're getting it wrong again. That's where you say, thank you for your guidance, master. I want you to write that down too. Okay, thank you very much. I'll keep that in mind. 
Oh, also, I forgot to ask you this earlier. Why won't you get pregnant? Uh, it's just a luck and timing thing, really. I don't know. I'd think it's a blessing for the time being. Is that really all? What are you trying to say? Be honest with me. Don't blame another thing on that bad luck of yours. You're not infertile, are you? I don't think that's it. But I do go to the gynecologist regularly. Hmm, something's not right. I read this in a magazine the other day. But isn't it harder to get pregnant when you're sick? Maybe you have an STD or something. What? Don't even joke around about that. I'm perfectly healthy. Cut it out. I'm not too sure about that. Since you don't have much for brains, your face is all you've got. Before you met Matt, you were fooling around a lot, weren't you? You're not seeing some other guy from work, are you? Don't say those kinds of things just based on my appearance. Could you please not be so mean to me? I don't do things like that. I don't know what type of person you think I am, but you're not right. It's not like it's that rare for a housewife to have an affair. I read about it online all the time. I hear it happens a lot these days. And you know, the divorce rate in this country is totally ridiculous. Please stop. I would never do something like that. Stop making all these assumptions about me. You're completely wrong. I'm sorry. I was just asking because I got worried. It's not like I'm bullying you or anything. Don't get the wrong idea. If you say so. I didn't really want to ask anyway. But, you know, it's a little lonely not having a grandchild yet. Everyone's always proudly showing me pictures of their grandchildren. I have nothing to show them in return. Even still, you don't need to ask me things like that. We're going to have kids when we're ready. We've talked about it before. I bet you have. But maybe you should bring it up again. I'm not getting any younger, you know. Before I leave this world, I'd like to hold my grandchild in my arms. If you're not going to get pregnant, then you should go get an examination at the hospital. Maybe think about getting infertility treatment. I understand. I'll talk about all this again with Matt. Now you're speaking my language. He might understand the real reason why you won't have kids. <laughs> Laura, are you done with work yet? Don't work too hard. You've got to save some energy for this Sunday's wife class. Hi, Mom. What's up? Well, actually, I wanted to apologize to you. I said a bunch of mean things the other day. Matt got really mad at me and even went as far as saying he wouldn't talk to me anymore. I'm really regretting it. Oh, don't worry about it. You apologized the other day. He said from now on, he'll at least do bare minimum communication. So don't worry about it. Thank you. To have such an open-hearted daughter makes me truly happy. Even so, I really am cruel. Mom, what's up with you? You're acting really different. I'm telling you, it's fine. If there's nothing else you need, I'm going to go make dinner. Excuse me. Wait a second. There is something, actually. What is it? You know those lottery tickets I had you buy? You said you bought them, right? Yes. I went and got just one. Yeah, about that. The last thing Matt said to me was that you actually won a lot of money from it. You know, since we're so close, I was wondering if you could lend me some money. Like maybe 23000 or so? I'm actually in some debt myself. <laughs> I knew it! There's no way you'd be that nice to me without having a reason. Sorry, though. I already spent it all. <laughs> so I'm not going to be lending you anything. What? You spent all of it? No way. How was that possible? I used it all the other day with Matt and your husband. Why? Why was I not a part of that? We had a talk about your bullying, including your husband. I have been really down lately. After how much you've been bullying me. So after I won, we headed out and spent it all to cheer me up. But to spend it all? That's impossible. What in the world did you buy? I'm going to sell whatever my husband bought. Um, Mom, how much do you think I won? The prize was huge. So it has to be more than $75,000, right? Were you not talking to the neighbors about wanting to buy a house with it? 
So it has to be enough to put a down payment for a house with, no? You've got the wrong idea. We were just joking when we said that. What I won was about $390. $390? Yep. So the three of us went through all that money at a fancy steak place. Huh? Only 390 bucks? Don't say such misleading things. Otherwise, people will get the wrong idea. You're the one who got it wrong, are you not? I never said anything about winning the jackpot. Just that I won money. Plus, even if I won that big prize, I wouldn't lend any of it to you. I don't have an obligation to. And honestly, I wouldn't even lend you a quarter after the way you've treated me. You're talking pretty big for someone who only won a few hundred bucks. I figured if you'd won the big prize, you were the kind of daughter that would give me at least some, but I guess not. Oh, I wasted my time trying to be nice to you. You're useless to me. You have no right to say that. That's enough. I don't see any reason why I should associate myself with someone as useless as you. From now on, don't contact me anymore. I don't ever want to see your face again. What in the world have you done? I can't believe you told my husband about my debt. All I did was tell Matt what you told me. Hey, you said you would never speak this way to me again, but you've already broken your promise. What made you think he wouldn't find out about that eventually? I was keeping it a secret from him. He would have never known it if it weren't for you. Now that he knows, he's going to divorce me for sure. Why would you do this to me? <laughs> Who knows? I guess it just slipped. It's not like I was forbidden from saying it or anything. You would have understood if you just thought about it for a second. I guess I'm a terrible wife. Sorry. <laughs> but I hear this is your second time being in debt, isn't that right? You promised him that you would sign the divorce papers if you got in debt again. So it's your fault. It's not my fault. I had no choice. I needed money. Needed or wanted? There's a big difference. You used loan monies to support a certain young man, right? You donated to a live streamer, am I wrong? You were the one looking for men online, so this is all your fault, really? <laughs> Why do you know about that? Dad handed over the laptop you were using. He said there were no expensive brand items in the house and asked if I could look into it. He said he'd been staying up late into the night, looking at the computer, and he thought it was suspicious. It wasn't anything bad, so it's fine, right? I was purely just supporting him, that's all. That's how those people make their living. I just can't see how that alone would put you in debt. It blows my mind. It might have been fine if you were working somewhere and spending your own money, but... I'm not raising children anymore, so I'm just doing what I should as a housewife. I'm not interested in being told off by some good-for-nothing woman like you. I'm not speaking ill of your hobby, but getting caught up in debt, keeping a secret from your husband, that is a problem. We're going to fully work together with Dad, so don't expect any help from us. Wait, how about this? Why don't you tell him to reconsider the divorce? If you do, then I'll forgive you. You'll forgive me? No, I'm okay. Whether or not you and him get divorced is nothing to do with me. Considering how much you've harassed me until now, I don't care what happens to you. Why? I've done so much for your sake, have I not? I go out of my way every day to walk by your place and make sure things are okay. I even taught you how to cook. Have you ever heard of unwelcomed kindness? Neither Matt nor I asked for it. I never wanted to have you teach me cooking, especially since you were so arrogant and bossy about it. You're really doing all of that stuff to hang it over our heads. I'm not stupid. Your mother-in-law is someone you should cherish. How can you say things like this? Didn't your parents raise you right? If you want to be cherished, then become someone worth cherishing. You're my husband's mother, so I speak with you when I have to. But as far as I'm concerned, we're strangers. You think you suddenly become important to me just because we became family? 
Have you ever treated me like I was important to you? I have been! Is that so? Well, that's news to me, since I've never even felt that a single time. As I thought, there's no way I can get along with you. Okay, okay. From now on, I'll work hard to be a good mother-in-law. I won't say anything mean to you, so please just help me out this one time. If you could just tell him that I want him to reconsider our divorce, that would be enough. You broke your promise to him to never borrow money again. You also broke your promise to never speak ill to your daughter-in-law again. How can I believe anything you say? Because I'll give a proper apology. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I regret what I've done so much. Just saying that is easy. With my husband casting me away, I can't go on living. When I got into debt before, I promised that if it happened again, I'd even waive my share of our property. It's still in writing. What kind of a respectable wife makes the same mistake again, even after being in so deep? There's nothing I can do for you. You're completely on your own to face the consequences of your own mistakes. So please don't contact me again. After this, Matt's going to block your number so you won't be able to talk to him either. Wait, I'm begging you. Listen to what I'm saying. Oh, there was something I wanted to tell you. What? Tell me anything. I'll listen to whatever you have to say. I got pregnant. Wow, that's incredible. Congratulations. If that's the case, all the more reason for me to stay with my husband. No, I think this happened because we knew we'd be parting ways with you. Actually, ever since I bought that lottery ticket, nothing but good things have happened. I think God gave me a chance to turn my luck around. What are you trying to say? The reason for my bad luck all along was you. So stay out of my life from now on. I'm finally happy now. My in-law's marriage ended in a bitter divorce after my mother-in-law's gambling addiction came to light. She had no choice but to leave the house since she had signed a written statement when she borrowed money from my father-in-law. He had enough evidence to prove her fault and get rid of her quickly. I felt sorry for him, but I also admired his courage and dignity. He was such a gentle and kind man, and he deserved better than a woman who lied, cheated, and wasted his hard-earned money. My mother-in-law, on the other hand, was left with nothing but debts and regrets. She had no place to go, no one to help her, and no way to pay back what she owed. She was desperate and furious, and she blamed us for her misfortune. She tried to barge into our house one day, hoping to find some valuables or money to steal. But she was in for a surprise. We had moved out of that house while she was busy with a divorce. We had bought a new house with the lottery money that I won, thanks to her ironic suggestion. She didn't know that we had moved, so she broke into the wrong house. The new owners were shocked and scared by her intrusion, and they called the police right away. She was arrested for trespassing and burglary, and she had to face the consequences of her actions. She called us later, begging us to bail her out and be her guarantors. But we refused, of course. We wanted nothing to do with her anymore. We didn't know what happened to her after that, and we didn't care. We were happy with our new life, and we didn't need her negativity and drama. My father-in-law sold his house too, and moved into a nice condo near our neighborhood. He was happy for us, and he was excited to become a grandfather. He often visited us and helped us with chores and cooking. He was such a nice father-in-law, and I loved him like my own dad. Now that my source of stress was gone, I focused on raising a child with my precious family. I didn't have any good memories from my time with my mother-in-law, but I was grateful that she recommended me to buy that lottery ticket. It was the best thing she ever did for me.